Hi everyone. This is Deb Tim and welcome to my channel. Beside me you can see my Fahaka Puffa Fish Zeppelin. He is so cool and I've learned so much about Fahaka Puffa Fish. Actually Puffa Fish in general because I do have green spotted puffers as well. So today I am going to share with you everything that I have learned about this incredible species. So stay tuned for a profile on the Fahaka Puffa Fish. This is my Fahaka Pufferfish, Zeppelin. They are known by a few different names, such as the Band Puffer, Nile Puffer, Striped Puffer, and Globefish, just to mention a few. These extraordinary fish are native to Africa. They can be found throughout many lakes and waterways that make up the Nile Basin. The Puffer is a bottom dweller or demersal fish. Being a carnivorous molluscivore, their diet consists of crustaceans, shellfish, mollusks, some insects, other shelled creatures, and anything else they can find to their taste. Feeding them in your aquarium, they eat pretty much the same things. From snails and mussels, worms, shrimp, all of these will keep your puffer very happy. These cool fish have very strong teeth for crushing shells. To that end, they need a variety of shell foods that they can grind their teeth down on. If their teeth get too long, it can hamper their ability to eat. In this case, you may have to trim your puffer's teeth yourself. Fahaka puffer fish do not have scales. Instead, their skin is thick and rough. Some puffers have a layer of spines that pop out when they puff themselves up. Puffing up is a defensive response to threats, making them look much larger and hopefully too big to fit into the mouth of the creature that's after them. They're also poisonous and will use this defense when necessary. The toxin is called tetrodotoxin, which affects the neurological center. The toxin blocks signals traveling from your brain to your muscles, causing paralysis. These puffer fish are generally greenish yellow in color with darker horizontal bars alternating with yellow stripes running down their sides in a loop formation. Around their nose and the top of their head they have spots and smudges to give them a really interesting coloration and unique look. Their bodies are elongated, thickening around the middle. They have the cutest expressive faces and will become interactive, showing you they are curious by coming to the glass to see what you are doing. If you're interested in getting yourself a Fahaka puffer fish, you will need a large aquarium. This tank that Zeppelin is in at the moment is 75 gallons. Because he's still little, he is fine. But keep in mind they grow big and they grow fast. In no time he will outgrow this tank and will need a 125 in the future. They require enough room to comfortably fully turn around in their tank. Now substrate can be your choice as puffers are not fussy on that. Although I have found Zeppelin likes to bury himself in the sand that I use as his substrate. As for ingesting hard particles like bits of sand or gravel, it's unlikely that would cause any problems as that is the nature of their food. Puffer fish are well known for their messy eating habits. It's imperative that you have a good, large capacity canister filter as they produce much detritus through waste and leftover bits of food. Maintaining a healthy filtration system is crucial. With high amounts of waste, water quality can change quickly to an unhealthy environment 
turning the water to toxic levels and endangering your Fahaka fish's well-being. As for their decor, anything solid, well-anchored, and durable are okay. Puffer fish are generally very um, aggressive with their food, so they often knock over decor. I'm finding with Zeppelin that he is swimming all through the tank, through his swim through, but I don't think there's anything he misses. I personally believe it's more important to give him lots of swimming room because he cruises that tank from morning till night. These are a couple of land snails or garden snails that I bring in from outside. I have a whole jar full and it turns out that they are one of Zeppelin's favorite foods. I like to show him his food before I feed him so he knows what's coming. He's very, very smart and very aware. Pufferfish are loners, aggressive, and unsociable. There are absolutely no recommended tank mates for a Fahaka puffer. I did add a pleco a week ago to this tank. He was only in here for a couple days. He was too scared to come out yet in the morning. I could clearly see his cleaning trails. Although he was coming out at night, it's not fair for my poor pleco to live in fear like that. So he's back in his home. These puffer fish are intolerant of tank mates and will attack ripping chunks of meat off their bodies with their strong teeth. They will even attack their own species unless it's spawning time. Now I'm not going to be getting into breeding these amazing fish. I'm very happy with Zeppelin as he is and have no intentions of getting a second one. From the information that I have read, they are not commonly bred in a home aquarium. Most are wild caught. They are flourishing and not on any endangered species lists. I am learning more and more every day about puffer fish. I actually spend a fair bit of time with Zeppelin. He sometimes just sits and watches me read when I sit beside his tank. They are intelligent and can be trained to take food directly from your hand. I use a tweezer. To hand him food. I don't know how he uses that poison of his, but I'm not going to take any chances. Now I did mention these guys grow big and grow fast, but how fast? In the first 10 months of their life, they do the most growing at about an inch every four weeks. After that, their growth rate significantly slows down and it will be 18 months to two years before your Bahaka pufferfish reaches his full adult size. So do you think this is a fish for you? So until next time, this is Dead Tim signing out. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you're having a great day. Have a wonderful day tomorrow and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.